Man, after that winter we had this year, shoot, I don't understand. It's been cold since like November and it's still cold. Gotta get, I gotta get this grass together, y'all. Get my lawn right. Alabama State coach Ely's saying, look, my guys are firing around, running hard in practice, making plays, they fired up. He said, look, they welcome Jackson State. They ready for the game. He said, we only had one game on February 26. You know, a lot of stuff was going on with the pandemic, coronavirus, things of that nature. He says, we're ready. We're ready. We look forward to the challenge. And having that time off actually helped us. He says, because after we play Jackson State, we play like five games in a row. So we definitely up for the challenge. And, you know, we're ready for Jackson State. He acknowledges that Jackson State is playing real good football. You know, they're clicking on all cylinders. So we got to, he said, we got to play good defense. We have to play good defense, stop them, and we got to score some points on offense. But you got to understand that Jackson State's, they got 3-0. They didn't have no time off, so they got a lot of momentum. And like you said, he clicking, he's, Jackson State is clicking on all cylinders. Yeah, you had a lot of rest off, coach. You had a lot of time off, but you're probably going to be a little rusty. Probably going to need to work a couple kinks out. You haven't played since February 26. But the confidence that Jackson State is playing with, going into Alabama, Montgomery, they're not phased by, by that. They're confident. And they're prepared. They're ready to go. I'm definitely going to be checking the game out on ESPN, too. You know I'm going to talk to these guys later. Let's go to SportsNet. Oh, did y'all see the weight room in Indianapolis where they playing the tournament at? Did y'all see the men's weight room, all the weights they got at their disposal that they work out, stay in shape? And then you look at the women's weight room, they just got a set of dumbbells. Like, man, why a human being, especially Americans, always on some inequality, unequal stuff, man? It's it's crazy. How are you just gonna give the women some 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 dumbbells? It's, it's just crazy. It's 2021, like, and we had all these marches, protests, women's rights. It's Women's History Month, and they get a set of dumbbells. Now the NCA, NCAA said they're gonna rectify. It. They're gonna fix the, you know, fix the problem. But come on, man, like some dumbbells. That's all the women deserve. Some dumbbells. They work out just like dudes work out. What's up, y'all? It's Corner Sports Net. Just heard some news that Juju Smith-Schuster will remain in Pittsburgh on a one-year contract. And he's going to got more money in multi-years in Kansas City and in Baltimore. To me, it doesn't make any sense. You know why? It doesn't make no sense because he signed a one-year, $8 million deal in Pittsburgh. Now, if his production slips in 2021 or he suffers a little ah, ankle injury and misses a couple games, then in 2022, they're going to tell, they're gonna want him to take less money or show him the door. Now, you had the Kansas City Chiefs offering, what, up to $13 million. You had the Ravens offering more than that. And he chose to stay in Pittsburgh because he loves Pittsburgh. Now, if he balls out in 2021, now he can become a free agent again and make more money. But it's not like basketball and baseball where you can be pretty much an average pro and play 14, 15 years and make decent money. When you're in your prime, you get as much money as possible. He got less money 
than AJ Green. Who missed 23 games in the last couple seasons? He's 32 years old. He got less money than a lot of guys. Uh, but he's happy in Pittsburgh. Juju uh, is 25, 26 years old. Hope he doesn't miss his wonder where he can make generational wealth. That's all I'm saying. Me, personally, I would have took as much money as possible. That's just me. But he loves he loves the city of Pittsburgh. He loves the team. Talk to these guys later. It's Corner Sports Net. What's up, y'all? What's going on? It's Corner Sports Net. If you watch my videos, you know I'm pretty much on my way to work. But, oh, first, shout out to the Jackson State women's basketball team. You know, they made the NCAA tournament. They'll be playing on Sunday. So good luck to the Lady Tigers. Deion Sanders, he attended a soccer game, y'all, at Jackson State University. And he got to chopping it up with the head coach. Now everybody just thought that when Deion Sanders was hired, he's all about football. And that's true. So far, the results are promising. You know, they're 3-0. and So Deion and his staff are doing a great job. But Dion is like, look, I'm at the soccer game and the soccer field is not up to par. So I spoke to the coach and I'm trying to get a better soccer field at Jackson State University. So now when you ask him, well, how is he going to do this? Come on, man, fundraising, sponsorship, cor corporate sponsorship. He can find ways to get money. I mean, look what he's done with the football program. They got new uniforms. They got more than enough cleats. They got more than enough joggers and sweats and hoodies. He said when he came to Jackson State, he wants to level the playing field. So that includes soccer too. Not just football. So once again, it's not all about prime. It's about Jackson State University and HBCUs. Prime will probably have no problem raising money to get a soccer field, let's get a soccer field and get the facility up to par. Now, I don't know if you guys heard, I'm gonna switch up right now. The Black College Football Hall of Fame and the NFL, they formed some kind of partnership where there's gonna be an HBCU Legacy Bowl. You know how they got the Senior Bowl after the football season? Where the top seniors, well, some of the top seniors in the country, they play, they play in the Senior Bowl and they practice during the week. They show coaches and NFL scouts what they got. They showcase their talent. Now you got the HBC Legacy Bowl, which is going to take place a week after the Super Bowl, and it's going to be sort of the same thing. You're gonna practice all week, about 100 players, top players, HBCU players, and they're gonna have a game, and NFL scouts are gonna be there. And they're gonna look at the talent. They're gonna judge the talent. They're gonna critique the talent. You know you got some people out there saying, well, why, why are you just gonna uh, exclude other football players from other schools? I mean, we fought segregation 60 years ago, you're setting us back. No, that's not the case. Just like you got the Senior Bowl in Harley, no HBCU athletes are invited to the Senior Bowl. We need, uh, HBCUs need their own bowl to showcase for NFL scouts.